Alrighty guys, we're back for some Big Red Chandra, and this is a March of the Machine standard brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks, and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to ya. Also, we do got that Discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. Okay, what do we got in the build? Chandra, Hope Beacon is a 6 mana, 5 loyalty, legendary planeswalker. Got a passive ability here. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. Not bad, guys. So we got a plus two. Add two mana and any combination of colors. Okay. It's got a plus one. Exile the top five cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiled cards. Okay, not bad. It's got a minus X that's pretty good too. Chandra Hope's Beacon deals X damage to each of up to two targets. Nice. Looks like a really solid Planeswalker, guys. So this is very much a burn deck. So we got a bunch of burn here packed into the front of the build. We got all four play with fires. I mean, you guys know it. it's very powerful, right? More removal with some flame blessed bolt, as well as more removal with some abrade. Also rocking a couple volcanic spike uh, spites here. I almost called it volcanic spike instead. <laughs> it's a two mana instant a volcanic spite deals three damage to target creature, planeswalker or battle. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library if you do draw a card not half bad guys really though um just cycling through can be very important in a deck like this so got more burn here with stoke the flames four mana instant speed scat convoke so our creatures can help us cast it deals four damage to any target very powerful it's going to be great in here huh um let's continue going over the front of the build real quick we got a couple invasion of mercadias here so it's a two mana, four defense battle siege. And when it enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw two cards. A little bit of a card draw. And then when it flips into Chiron Flame Rite, it could actually help us wrap up some games too. I don't know how often we're actually going to want to target this battle just to get the Flame Rite onto the board. I think we're really just looking at this as an extra way to filter through the deck and draw some extra cards as well. Rouse reinforcements. Every time I've been playing with this, uh, it's been doing wonders, and I think it really fits with a Hope's Beacon style deck, right? So, two mana sorcery speed, create two, one, one, blue and red elemental creature tokens. Of course, it fits with the Convoke on Stoke the Flames as well. I think Rouse reinforcements has just been doing wonders for me, like across the board, every single deck that I've been packing it into. But, like, for example, if we do get Chandra down uh, on turn six, and then you plus two this, you can immediately play Rouse Reinforcements to get some chump blockers to protect the Hope's Beacon, which is cool enough to at least try. Um, and of course, then if Rouse Reinforcements copies itself too, so you would get uh, four of the elemental tokens to block with, right? And it doesn't have to be turn six. We do have some ramp in here with a single Celestis. I do like squeezing Celestis in when we have like one mana instant speed card so you can ramp with Celestis and then keep a play with fire open uh, to take out an important soldier from your opponent's board or something. You know what I mean? So yeah, I like Celestis a lot. So similar concept with Chandra as well. You get Chandra down turn three, you immediately plus it and then you use one of your one mana burn spells to get rid of something. And then if Chandra can actually stay on the board, it acts as ramp, maybe potentially getting you a turn five hopes beacon when it comes time, right? Of course, it's not big red without Fable of the Mirror Breaker right now. Just an incredible card that I don't think we got to go over. <laughs> we also have a Jaya Fiery Negotiator in here for mana four loyalty legendary planeswalker. It's got a plus one, creates a, a red monk one one that has prowess. Uh, all those extra monks could go really well with like Stoke the Flames and stuff. So yeah. Got a minus one here, exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them. You may play that card this turn. I almost read that as until the end of your next turn because that's what a lot of them say, right? But no, it is this turn. It's got a minus two, choose target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you attack this turn, Jaya deals damage equal to the number of attacking creatures to that uh, creature. So we kind of, sort of, I mean, I don't want to call it going wide in here, but since we're creating a creatures off of Fable and Rouse Reinforcements and the Monks on the Jaya, you never know, that minus two could do a lot of damage. It's got a minus eight here. I don't think I've ever pulled off the minus eight on this yet, so 
maybe today's the day, right? You get an emblem with whenever you cast a red instant or sorcery spell, copy it twice. <laughs> uh, you may choose new targets for the copies. That would be pretty cool. That would be a pretty cool uh, emblem to get. So we got four burn down the house. Going to be very important to just be able to wipe the opponent's board. But also when you don't have to wipe the board, those devils are kind of insane, guys. Especially if you're copying them. <laughs> if you have the hopes beacon down and you drop the burn down the house for some devils and now you have six devils, you're going to be wrapping up the game very shortly after that, right? Because you can even keep some chump blockers back for the uh, hopes beacon while you're still swinging in, getting some extra damage. Invoke Calamity, guys. Five mana, instant speed. It's got four red pips up there. You may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with total mana value six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana costs. If those spells would be put into your graveyard, exile them instead, exile Invoke Calamity. Uh, Invoke Calamity is pretty good, man. It, it's just kind of looking for the right deck to be squeezed into, and this very well might be a really good one for it, right? You could do crazy things like uh, just grab the Rouse reinforcements that you played earlier on and drop a Stoke the Flames on something. Why not, right? That is uh, six total, so... Yeah, that's the list, guys. Oh, we got some mana over here. We do have one Mirex. I thought about the double Mirex, but I don't want anything holding up a turn five Calamity if we really, really need it. And oftentimes, you know, up against some serious aggro like soldiers, <laughs> you might very well need this on turn five to do something fancy. Like um, it could even be something really simple like you don't have to use all six mana you could just grab a volcanic spite that you used earlier and drop in a braid too so you never know when that's going to come in handy so yeah no double murex uh single crucible of defiance i could see going up to two of these i could but i do think it's going to hold you up every now and then and i think we're going to need as much mana as possible on the board and not just a crucible chilling in our hands so yeah 23 normal mountains 25 total i think it's going to be I think 25 is going to be perfect, actually. <laughs> Honorable mentions over here, guys. Cathartic Pyre almost made the cut. I think Volcanic Spite in this one's going to be a little bit better, but since this one can help you discard cards to the grave and stuff too, you can eventually recast them with Calamity, stuff like that, right? I, I just think Volcanic Spite's going to be better, especially since we do have a battle too. You never know when we're going to target the battle, so... Uh, Lightning Strike almost made the cut, obviously. I think our utility removal is going to be a little better than the potential of just hitting the opponent's face, especially since we have Stoke the Flames in here. And this is not a City on Fire build, <laughs> but I thought I'd put it in the honorable mentions because it's like I said, we kind of sort of know how to get creatures on the board, but I don't think this is the right build for City on Fire. All right, guys, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked and see how we do. All right, guys, we'll see if we can get right into that first match. Heck yeah, we do. All right, what am I expecting from the build? I gotta be real with you guys. I'm expecting a lot. I kind of sort of built this to uh, compete on the ladder. <laughs> kind of sort of built this one for myself just to, just to do well. So we'll see. We go first here. All right, I, I don't see a reason to not keep this hand. I'm surprised we go first. Uh, maybe the game thinks we're mono red aggro. I really doubt that. <laughs> Think we just won the coin flip, huh? All right. Looks like the uh, opponent had to mulligan there. Ooh, soldiers. I say we remove the uh, officer. I say we hit it. We have the open mana now. We have a lot of ways uh, to remove a lot of their other stuff too. So, I, I, yeah, I say we hit that. Even though there's obviously better targets. Uh, like Valiant Veteran. Yeah, we'll hit that too. I don't think we send anything in our hand. I'm going to decline this. I like the hand, man. We're going to need to burn down the house eventually. Okay. Fable over Chandra, I think... I think that's an easy choice. Although getting Chandra down when there's nothing swinging into it, that could have been really good too. Hmm. 
Hmm. Now I'm wondering. Maybe this could have been the match where we minus seven the Chandra. You know, getting it down early. Definitely got lucky going first, man. Get that up to 3-3. Nice. Prevents our swing, but... I like the Calamity. I wouldn't mind sending the burn and the uh, the mountain, but again, I kind of just like the hand. I'm going to decline, man. <laughs> I think we're drawing well enough. And fourth mana. I really doubt they block here. I really, really doubt it. Because we just burnt two of their other creatures. And then what do we do? Like, we could get Devils. Devils wouldn't be too bad. Because we could do it again next turn's the thing. Now nah, it's going to be Chandra. And then, instead of taking damage to our face, Chandra will tank the damage from the Veteran. Is that is that the right thing to do though? <laughs> ah, always second guessing my plays after the fact. We'll see. They might actually just swing face anyways, and then but then we get to keep the Chandra, which sounds just kind of ridiculous. Brutal Cathar, take the token. It's got to be veteran on itself. Swing at Chandra, and then we burn down the house, and then have calamity. I don't know. I don't know if saving life was the best decision there. At first, it seemed like it was okay. But now, I'm not convinced with myself here. We definitely want to get rid of Veteran before it gets above the burn down the house. We're going to lose our reflection, too. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um. Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, we're technically playing the long game, so... <laughs> It's fine. Everything's fine. Do we play this? No. Because we can play it next turn, too. Unless we... No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, because if we saw Chandra off the top, we still would need the uh, sixth mana anyway, so... Okay, veteran number two. Swing for two. Sky Strike Officer. Yeah, this Invoke Calamity is going to be nasty. Wow, they didn't swing. That was weird. That, that was strange. All right, how do we want to do this? We go burn down the house and play with fire their face, get the scry. We do it on their turn, too. What if they find protection or something crazy? They can buff it all. I say we do it on their turn, guys. They still have the Sky Strike Officer for the draw, too. So if they, like, spam out some soldiers... <laughs> That's why that's why they didn't attack. That's why. Yeah, the Sky Strike Officer draw. So they could still do that on top. Oh, they can do it on top on their turn too though. So they're really gonna be restocking their hand here once we Oh, and they're gonna go for the swing first too. Well at least they're not getting the extra draw, right? Alright. We should do this, guys. We should do it. We don't want to take this damage. Ah, oh, but then again, if they play a couple more soldiers, <laughs> I feel like I'm not playing this one out very well, guys. Okay, luckily... Alright, five damage to everything. Play with fire their face. So if we took the damage, if we took seven down to 13, there was a chance that they just, like, end up, um... Playing more soldiers and then we just like get a huge board wipe in at the same time i'm not really sure i'm not sure because yeah they're definitely going to play something else here now or not wow mountain i'm going to keep that in hand in case we want to send that to the fables ability next turn I mean, they have seen a lot... <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Oh, my goodness. They have seen a lot of soldiers already, so... Maybe... It's land in hand. It might be. Ah, oh, resolute reinforcements. That makes sense.
Oh my goodness, guys. Okay. I had to mute the mic. I had to clear my throat. <laughs> What's happening to me? Ah! Okay, Brutal Cathar hits the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's nighttime. Thank goodness. <laughs> I like having that blocker there. Ooh. Ew. Okay, yeah, no, we're sending both of these because we could swing with our 2-2 two -two and ramp into Chandra that way. Which we're looking for the Chandra at this point. Okay, Invasion of Mercadia is pretty good. A little bit of card draw. There's our Chandra. Okay, well... <laughs> we keep this as a chump blocker. Um, Chandra can't come down this turn. We definitely are going to need more in our hand, too. I'll keep the Mountain in case we see another Invasion of Mercadia. And then just play it next turn and play the Chandra off of that, right? I think that's completely fine. Definitely saw a lot of mountains, but we got a lot of ways to filter through. And I probably could have optimized these burn down the houses and everything early on, you know what I mean? Since it was reinforcements though, they were going to get around that regardless. Alright, we're still at 20, dude. We're going to take out this... Wait, can they instant speed this. I mean, it still trades, so. Let's see what happens. They go Valiant Veteran. It's an extra two damage to our face. They trade with reinforcements. And it's not going to be flipping yet. Stoke the Flames. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty solid. I'll tell you what. It's pretty tempting to flip this right about now, too. So Chandra can come down. We can go minus four. Hit the Brute. Pay three. Hit the Invasion. Dude, that's pretty good, man. I, I think paying three there is pretty good. And I think minus four is the way to go here. X is four. Because we, we get to flip this. Yes, I'm sure. We'll pay the three. Take action. Go ahead and cast this. And then stoke the flames. Like, we have we have great blockers to protect the Chandra. Stoke the flames will happen twice next turn because of the Chandra, right? So, I don't know, man. Uh, we're probably going to plus one, too. Try to find even more burn and just go all to face or something crazy. Uh, we'll see what we see off the top, too. Early on, losing the first Chandra Dress to kill and not taking four, it didn't seem to matter all that much right now. We also have this ability here, too, so... Um, and we can copy that, too. I don't know if that's necessarily what we want to do, but... <laughs> um, let's see what we see off the top, man. Let's see what we see. Cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those. I mean... Until the end of your next turn, too. So, I mean... Burn down the house. What was the other one? It was a play with fire, right? Yeah, GG opponent. So, burn down the house was going to happen twice. So let, let, let's go over this real quick. Hold on. Hey! accidentally ranking up. That's how we like to do it. Did I have fun? Heck yeah, I did. A nice little puzzle that uh, soldiers gave us. On, um, like, I wonder how unlucky they got, though. They, I mean, two Brutal Cathars, Sky Strike Officer, two Valiant Veterans, Resolute Reinforce. I mean, it was doing the soldier thing overall. It, it was. Um, I still think that they probably could have gotten a little bit more lucky with what they were seeing on the board. Also, we went first there, too. Anyways, what was going to happen? This was going to copy. We we're going to get six devils on the board. Then we had... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is three mana and a tap. Oh, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So we would have just had a bunch of chump blockers for the turn. But... <laughs> I think that would have been fine. And then we still could have swung with some too. Because that's a lot of chump blockers, right? We probably would have copied one with reflection too. Because when it died, it also did an extra damage. And then we'd still have enough chump blockers. That's brutal, man. I completely understand that concede. Anyways, if we weren't able to wrap up the game with a double stoke the flames next turn, 
then we were going to go ahead, create a couple one ones and then give everything we had plus one plus out, oh, which is a lot of extra damage because of all those tokens. Very cool, man. I like it. I like it. Let's get into the next one. Guys, if you ever uh, if you ever think, uh, man, red, just get into the next game. There are uh, chapters down at the bottom of the video and also timestamps in the description. Always feel free to go ahead and skip ahead. Even though I never hear any of you guys uh, say anything like that, I, I just bring it up just in case. You never know, right? You never know. Always feel free to uh, skip ahead, get into the next game. All right, opponent, what you bring into the table? Something scary? All right, not a bad hand. I'm glad we got to see the Chandra last uh, game too. Like, if you can get it onto the board and protect it, like. It just does, it does so much for you guys. Okay, yep, so we keep this. Okay. Flame Bless Bolt is terrific for the Phoenix Chick. Because it exiles. And I guess that's what we keep open. It probably is still going to be the Phoenix Chick, because we have a hard time blocking that. So even if they play something else hasty. Crap. Um, Devastator flies in too, but it's gotta be the Phoenix chick, right? For the sake of the exile? I think so. Eventually we take out Devastator with something else and it's not like they can bring that back. Volcanic Spite open is fine, but Rouse Reinforcements gets us uh, closer to Stoke the Flames nonsense. Also blocks really well on the ground overall, so. I think this is going to be fine. If they're rocking the Devastator, this could be... I, I've been seeing mono red dragons floating about, and it's trying to do like an aggro thing. Ooh. Okay. The Thrill Seeker has entered the building, guys. The Thrill Seeker is really good. The last time we played with Thrill Seeker, holy cow, was it an MVP. Like, it it plugged extra damage in easily. Okay, Volcanic Spike. So if we go one, two. Yeah, we, we can't do two things this turn either way. So what I'm going to do... I don't entirely know what this deck is, but I feel like keeping Volcanic Spite open is completely fine. How do you guys feel about that? It doesn't... I don't think they would have anything to protect the Devastator. And anything like that would have to target Devastator first. So then the Spite comes down regardless. Okay, Swift Spear. We might still... I mean, we'll definitely block Thrill Seeker if they swing at that. And then they could use its ability. Um, okay. So we're going to hit the Devastator. So like I said, I don't know what they would have to protect the Devastator, even when we don't necessarily know what the opponent's rocking. Rouse Reinforcements against this deck could be good, but I'm going to send one just to see if we can see something a little better. That Oh no, not a land. Oh no. Let's see. Swift Spear gets above the double block regardless if they uh, play an instant from their hand. Um, still worth a chump here, I would say. Like, we're at 15. Okay. Uh, maybe we should have risked the double block. Oh, no, we got another land, guys. The good news is Stoke the Flames is open, and Stoke the Flames would most, or should most likely hit the Swiss Spear, unless they really start to double down on things. Yeah, we're going to need to see a bit more than the land, but the good news is once we get the land established onto the board, <laughs> uh, then we're good to go. Like, anything we rip off the top is going to be really good. Bloodfeather Phoenix is concerning, but it doesn't have haste. A uh, cool different variant of Mono Red opponent. I appreciate that greatly. We are going to attempt the double block this time. See what they do in their hand. Uh-huh. And then we will just go ahead and take care of the Swiss Spear, I would say. We get to keep our chump blockers. We're going down to 12. 
keep our chump blockers on the ground, and then the phoenix is a problem, but we have so much removal in here, man. But then the phoenix keeps coming back, too. Depending on what you're seeing, we might want to go up a second Flame Blessed Bolt. I'll tell you what, it's a lot. It does. Uh, although we haven't seen too many mono red builds running the Blood Feather Phoenix, which to me is surprising. I think Blood Feather Phoenix is the way to go. But uh, actually, just flyers in general, yeah, opponent, I'm loving the build. The Devastator, the Phoenix Chick, the Blood Feather Phoenix. It looks really good, man. Hey, Chandra's a great draw. Nothing this turn is a shame, but uh, keep double blockers for the Foundry. They could really uh, rip great things off the top too, though, so. Okay, Foundry powers up, and we triple block it, because if they found Burn off the top, we, we don't want to risk not taking out the Foundry. We played enough mono red to know that a, a play with fire can really mess up double blocking plans. Down to nine and a little bit of danger. Just gonna go minus two on the Chandra. It'll still be still be a three loyalty planeswalker. Okay. They do have the thrill seeker open if they want to use that ability. It might be better just to plus two. A seven loyalty planeswalker would be very difficult for them to deal with, but... You know what? I'm going to plus one instead. I, I think if they burn, bring Phoenix back, swing at Chandra, they ditch the Thrill Seeker, get rid of a chump blocker on the ground. Crucible, full swing at that Chandra. Down to two. Um, play with fire. Oh no, man, we're really flooding out. So if we go plus one, see what else we see, right? Until the end of your next turn, you may cast an, an, an instant or sorcery from among those exiled cards. So I believe we get to do it again with the other two as well, right? Okay. <laughs> Burn down the house. GG opponent. <laughs> GG. So there were some decisions to make there for sure. Um, number one, would we want to just go burn down the house, copy the, the devils, right? And just go six devils wide? Maybe. We'd get a swing. We'd still be able to play the play with fire. What was the correct decision there, though? Burn down the house, wipe the board. So first, we would go play with fire. Copy the play with fire. Hit face, hit face. Burn down the house, wipe the board. Well, that doesn't even seem that, that good, right? Because we could go play with fire, hit the phoenix, hit the 1-1. One, one. They have 1-1-1 one, one, one remaining, right? Because, you know, the play with fire would copy off of Chandra. Then we could go burn down the house from the second set, get a bunch of 1-1s one, on the ground to block. Honestly... I understand the concede, but there was no guarantee that I would have selected the right thing to do here. You know what I mean, guys? Because <laughs> you can only cast one of them. And the play with fire we had from the last turn, too. Yeah, cast an instant or sorcery spell from among those exiles. So, yeah, I don't know. It was probably burned down the house. Get a bunch of 1-1s. Like, a bunch of 1-1 devils could help you wrap up games pretty fast anyways. And then if you're burning... If you just like, yeah, that was probably the play. Get six one ones, go uh, play with fire, take out the uh, phoenix, and hope they didn't find burn off the top or something. What would you guys have done there though? Uh, so far, so good, man. I like it. It's performing well enough. We are seeing a lot of land, but I don't think we want to go down to twenty four. I really don't. Even with the little bit of ramp that is packed in here off of Fable, Chandra, Celestis. All of our three drops, actually, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, see a lot of land again. That That's concerning, but I don't think... Like, what would have happened if we didn't see that six mana right when we needed it from the Chandra? It would have been bad news, right? We needed that Chandra to hit the board as soon as possible. Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. We're doing really good. <laughs> I wanna see if we just flood out terribly. I think maybe we mulligan. I think an ideal hand in this deck would be three land, but like that's pretty normal. That's, yeah, that's pretty usual for a deck. Okay, they go Bankbuster, most likely because we have the open um, mountain there. They don't want to play like Blood Tithe Harvester and then immediately have it get burnt when they can play it next turn, crew up Bankbuster and swing for four. Um, which is probably going to happen unless they have the Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. No, they go for a draw. Uh-oh. That might mean they don't have a third mana. If that's the case, we're going face. Get that scry. <laughs> Third stoke the flames. You know what? Get out of here. <laughs> we don't need ya. <laughs> oh man. Especially since it doesn't hit cards like uh Shieldred and stuff. Eee. Mirax. Uh, we're pretty safe to play the Mirax. Go Celestis. Uh the opponent not seeing a land there. Hopefully it's not more than uh oh. Two turns in a row. You got this opponent. Hey, get out of my hand! <laughs> well, they're definitely not going to concede after seeing all the land we have here. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. Uh, good thing we have that one Murex here, huh? We might filter, honestly. I'm going to filter. Switch it tonight. Over the 1-1, one -one, I, I think this is fine. Ooh, okay. Invasion of Mercadia is uh, very good. Very good draw. And that's one of the main reasons why I, like, we, hmm, we could go down to 24, because even if we're not seeing the land, then we do have early ways to filter too, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Tough decisions overall. Ditch that land. Get out of here. A little bit of card draw. Volcanic Spite. I guess we hit this before there's any ramp and any way to stop me from hitting this, right? Probably. And filter that mountain out again, probably too. Since we had the ramp on Celestis, we already have six available. Another mountain makes sense. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this, take the action. Mountain play with fire open is amazing because Fable number two could come down. Uh, I think that the opponent made a good decision risking the two land off of draw with the bank buster they all they needed to do was get to the uh third yep shielded and w w we will probably I'm gonna swing for four. Oh no they're not they don't they don't want to risk the two mana being open uh we're gonna hit face guys How you guys feel about that i want to get that scry we're seeing like a lot of land we're filtering through it but Okay, play with fire. Um, so we probably... Probably send it, right? We're looking for bigger things, and now we need a way to take care of the Shieldred. Stoke the Flames doesn't do it, and I don't necessarily just want to drop the burn down the house for one Shieldred, because, you know, second Shieldred is just as easy as the first one for opponents, so... The longer we let this go, the more we draw, like, Shieldred just runs away with the game regardless. Fable's not bad, but, like... I guess we take care of Shieldred. Uh, it doesn't- it doesn't feel like the right play, but neither does just dropping Fable. Stoke the Flames on the 4 battle? Gets us a 3-3. Three, three. That's not enough for Shieldred either, guys. See, we, we have like, we have three more burn down the house in the deck too. Trespasser's a pain. If we would have waited a turn, this would have been way better of a board to hit. Oh no, guys, what have I done? We just, we can't let Shieldred be on the board too long. Big thing here though, guys, we knew the reflection was about to flip, so we knew that there was at least going to be one more creature to try to hit. We also know that the opponent doesn't have blue in the deck, so, like, 
there was no risk of like them having open mana for a counter. Fable keep stoke the flames open, potentially discard for trespasser. Draw on Bankbuster. Yeah, they're drawing a lot of cards. So are we though. Stoke the flames is open. We could we could still hit the invasion too. Get a 3-3 three, three next turn. And then we won't have to discard the mountain. We could discard it to the Fable ability, right? That could be good. If if we don't plan. Like, the 3-3 three, three blocks the Trespasser really well, too. They might go... They might go second Bank Buster from hand. No, 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 no. No, that wouldn't work. Okay, Harvester, Copy Harvester, <laughs> yeah. It's a pain, but... We know it happens. And then as soon as they target the 2-2, uh, two -two, I guess we'll use the Stoke the Flames. And I will go ahead and grab the Invasion. And I hope we find a board wipe again soon. I mean, like I said, we had three more burn down the house and two Invoke Despairs. They have yet to pick up the first one with the uh, Trespass here. I think hitting this is better than tr attempting Trespasser, discarding the mountain that we could uh, filter out next turn. Now see, this just feels like... This just feels like a great trade for us, right? It, it, it essentially was the Stoke the Flames that took it out, but we didn't have to discard a card. So like overall, that worked out. We just had to spend a, a battle to do it instead of discarding... See, Fable number two isn't bad. Ah, oh, jeez. It isn't bad, but we have six mana, guys. We could find that Chandra, go minus two, wipe their board. Now, they do have two open here, so it could be like an Abrade. They could easily... Wait, wait, wait. Abrade only hits creatures, though, right? Creatures and then... And or artifacts. Which would be rough if they hit the Celestis. All right, let's see what we see. Ooh, Chandra. All right. All right, guys. Plus two Rouse reinforcements. That's four 1-1s one -ones on the board. Dude, Hope Speaking. Hope Speaking looking nasty. Oh, jeez. Oh, got to select red. Rouse reinforcements. That's cool. That's really, really cool, guys. Um, whereas we are probably like we filtered so much, but they're they're like getting legitimate card draw. We're we're filtering, but like they have what? Yeah, look at all the cards in their hand. Oh, <gasps> invoke despair. No, why? That that just like wipes our board clean, man. We don't even get the reflection. <laughs> oh no. Oh, jeez. Brutal stuff, man. Let's just take the four this time. I, I think we're in trouble. I think we've been in trouble. Um, and it it's most likely... Wow. Do we send that to the Celestis? Or just keep keep Play With Fire open? And Mirex? There's, there's a chance. But I think we're in some serious trouble. Especially since they could just save the other Invoke Despair for whenever we play another Chandra when we find it, right? Okay, switches to nighttime, which hopefully uh, doesn't come into play. Play with fire. Good news. Although they could play second Harvester, so... <laughs> we have Mirix open. I should just use it. I, You know what? I don't want to hold the opponent up throughout their whole turn, because you guys know I like to talk through the situations, and sometimes, it's, it doesn't happen all the time, sometimes I just forget to press the button while I'm talking, and we have nothing in hand, we have nothing hidden, there's literally no reason to, like, wait. Like, the, the Mirix token can't block either, so if the opponent forgot about it and swung in for some reason or something, like, <laughs> there's, there's, like, no reason to hold that. 
Now I can sit back and relax. Invoke despair. <laughs> I mean, it's probably just the Phyrexian might, right? Down to 10. Did they draw their third one for next turn? It is a possibility. Also, since it is night, the glutton could come down. Don't have enough mana right now. We should jump. We should jump. While we can. Okay, reflection open. Okay, volcanic spite. We probably want to hit the reflection, right? Like on our turn. Well, no, I guess we just hold it now. Like my brain is telling me we're up against Grixis, but it's it is Rakdos. Cut down, okay. That's a pain. Yeah, the opponent has had so much extra so many extra cards in hand. Happy the one one. So we could hit the one one now. They'll still have reflection though. You know what? Let's let's get rid of it. They might not be able to power up that bank buster, guys. <laughs> They might not have a creature in hand. It is very possible. And then, yeah, I'm just going to do this now. Like I said, nothing hidden in hand. Nothing fancy with the 1-1 uh, one, one token. Let's get it over with. <laughs> All right, opponent. You got a lot of cards in hand, buddy. Are you going to you gonna push that extra damage through this turn? Because the 1-1 one, one can't block. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Let's go, buddy. Oh my goodness, we are so dead. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't... I guess maybe they don't have a creature in hand. Oh no, they did. Well, kind of. And they also could have powered up Bankbuster there, swung for four. Huh. I mean, we're like super dead. But uh, they, they could have done a lot of extra damage in that last turn. I, it doesn't really matter. They can definitely play the long game here. Uh, speaking of the long game, a braid isn't doing too much, so let's just go ahead. Nah, I'll, I'll keep it. We'll, we'll uh, let the opponent play this out completely. Actually, let's see what we see off the top since it is nighttime. <gasps> wow. That hurts my feelings. If only we had a little bit more card draw, guys. We're back up to nine, though, and a braid. So they power up Bankbuster. We go a braid on the bank buster. That is a lot. They, they are going for it with the Chandra. Plus two on the Chandra makes sense because if we do have something fancy to stop their attackers, then they can eventually just minus the Chandra for the rest of the damage. I don't know. I think this could have gone either way, guys. And I, I really, really, really could have played this out better. Oh, nice. Very cool good game opponent and you know what i know i saved this for victories but you know you're rocking the chandra over there so i'll drop the chandra one nice guys overall i think our deck could have done a thing actually <laughs> like overall just in general i think this deck will be completely fine on the ladder i don't necessarily know if it's the one i want to use to try to rank up of course you guys know me i don't like the ranking up process anyways the games were pretty long overall i don't even know how many we got in today what three maybe four i don't know <laughs> you know mid-range decks they take a lot longer and you know that's not necessarily always my playstyle. but when it's mono red like this i love big red man and uh, I can't wait to try out some more uh, Artifact Big Red, too. It's been a while. Um, the new Karn from Aftermath looks awesome. I got to try that one out in Big Red, right? Here's the list again, guys. Chandra Hope's Beacon is very, very powerful. It's ridiculous. However, if you're up against like an Invoke Despair style deck like that last one, it's very easy for them to clean it up as well, so... And we're seeing a lot of Invoke Despair between Mono Black, Grixis, and that last Rakdos build. While we don't see too much Rakdos on the ladder overall, it's still going to happen. Like, it's still the same concept. You know, I always tease Grixis builds for being Rakdos with a splash of Make Disappear. That is very... That's the truth, man. So, <laughs> uh, that last opponent's deck looked very powerful. And honestly, 
it seems like we're all seeing different things anyway. So you guys might see a lot of that Rakdos. I, I have no idea that that was pretty much <laughs> one of the first times I've seen that. And especially the first time I've seen it running uh, Chandra on the top, which is cool, man. I like that. Invoke Despair, copy the Invoke Despair. That sounds disgusting. And the plus two even helps you mana fix for the Invoke Despair too. <laughs> that is awesome, man. Okay, anyways. Yeah, the opponents were running some pretty good stuff today. I, I had a lot of fun, actually. Um, And I said it earlier, too. I feel like the soldier deck maybe kind of sort of could have gotten a little bit more lucky, but they were still doing their soldier thing. We were just outpacing them with removal, especially since we went first. Uh, I love our three drops. Everything being things that can just ramp us a, a little bit sooner. Uh, everything in the deck helps us like filter nicely, too. Look, guys, if you're flooding out, if you're getting a lot of land like I was today and it's happening every single time, I would drop that mountain. Go up a Flame Blessed Bolt. I don't think you're going to be sad about going up a Flame Blessed Bolt, especially if you're seeing a lot of soldiers and stuff too, right? Or Mono Red. Take out those Phoenixes. Exile them. Get them out of here. A lot of Tenacious Underdogs. Get them out of here. Knock them out of the game, right? I could definitely see that. Other than that, I wouldn't change too much. Like maybe the Invoke Calamities being a two of is a little greedy too. A one of would be completely fine. You know, you're kind of at that point considering it like just an extra burn down the house that you're seeing out of the deck, uh, which would have gone a long way against that Rakdos build. See, that's what I mean, man. I think that game could have gone either way. I, I didn't play it out that well. I went for the burn down the house immediately on the shieldred and then all of a sudden the opponent started dropping these creatures on the board and a lot of them at that so yeah saving the burn down the house for a better moment would have been good they would have gotten a little bit more value out of shieldred but like overall yeah i i should have saved it i should have but seeing a second one wouldn't have necessarily been unlucky either especially since we do have the two invoke calamities so i don't know i don't know it depends I could see knocking the Invoke Calamity and going up like a second Celestis. You don't mind having two Celestises because you, if worse comes to worse, you just discard it to its own, or own ability or the Macadia or the Fable. Like you just don't mind having two of them. That extra ramp is nice. You could also see the three uh, Chandra Dress to kill too. Just a little bit of extra damage helping you close up games is nice. There's a little bit of fine tuning to do here, but overall, I think this version of the build would be fine. Uh, as well so what you could potentially do is knock a mountain go up a flame blessed bolt knock and invoke calamity maybe go up that third chandra could also see going up a, a third invasion of mercadia it does act as card draw since you discard and draw two right and then you actually get to keep the battle on the board potentially eventually flipping it into the chiron flame right so I could see three of those as well. Or maybe just even more early game removal too. Uh, second, a braid could be really good. Getting rid of the artifacts um, sooner. So like seeing the braid before they draw all three off of a bank buster could be huge. So that's a thing too, right? So, okay. One more recap. Drop a mountain, go up a flame blessed bolt. Drop an invoke calamity, go up a second a braid. I could see that. I, I think that would be pretty good actually. And I, I do like the three Chandra Hopes Beacons on the top end. We saw it often, but not too often. Like, you know, we didn't start with all three of them in our starting hand and then uh, cried ourselves to sleep as we mulligan. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you and I will see you in the next video.